Until recently, I thought the more gates you had in series, the slower the circuit would be. And I recently found out that that's not always true. So in this video, I'm going to dig into that. I'm a bit worried that maybe this video is too technical or too complicated. So let me know in the comments if you like this or if I should do simpler stuff. So the topics I want to cover in this video are one, my misunderstanding of CMOS power consumption. Two, why are there so many different variants of the standard cells? Three, how those variants can help us speed up digital circuits. And four, prove that in a simple test using the open lane ASIC flow. So let's get started. So the first thing I want to look at is my misunderstanding of CMOS power consumption. Now, I run some experiments where I have an inverter and then I switch the inverter and I see that I'm using more current, but I always just looked at the current that was being drawn from the supply rails. So let's just have a quick look at that. So I've got my hand-drawn inverter that I uh, drew in Magic and I can extract the, the netlist, the transistors and the, um, the parasitic capacitance and the resistance and then I can simulate that with NG Spice. So here's the Spice deck showing the, uh, the PFET and the NFET and the various parasitics. And then I'm going to create a pulse and run a transient response. So let's have a look at that. And we've got the A input and the, um, the Y output. And at the moment when the A input is changing, we've got this situation where the P and the N are both turning on at the same time. And we can see the current draw of VDD, the supply rails, we get this spike of current being used. And that's the short circuit CMOS current. But there's actually another very important current that I didn't really realize, and that's the amount of current it takes to charge up the gate, the gate capacitance, to actually turn the MOSFET on. So let's add that to the SPICE deck, re-simulate it, and check that. So I've rerun the simulation, but now I'm checking the current on the input, and you can see the spikes when we're charging up or discharging the gate capacitance. And that's a significant amount of current and we can't discount it. So here's the Skywater 130 nanometer standard cell for a, an inverter. And you can see this is pretty similar to the one I just showed you. Um, this one's neater and it fits in the regular grid of standard cells that we use when we're building up the bigger circuits. And we have all these variants here. So let me load um, inverter four instead. And you can see it's the same structure, but now we've got one, two, three, four P channels and one, two, three, four N channels, and they're all ganged together. So we have a four times bigger drive strength, but we also have a bigger input capacitance. And if I load up this uh, big monster here, it's got the same thing, but it's just even more uh, MOSFETs in parallel all driving together. So previously, I thought that the only point of having all these variants was if you have a circuit where you're branching out lots of different wires and you've got one gate that needs to drive lots. And so that's called fan out. If you have a high fan out, then you need more drive strength to charge the gate capacitance of all the connected gates. And an example of this is a clock network where you've got the clock and it's driving loads of different things. But there's another reason, because if we have a stronger drive strength output, we can charge up the gate capacitance of the following cell faster, and that can improve the timing. So let's do a quick experiment where we simulate this and check if that's true. So this experiment is based on one that I found in the West Harris book, which I highly recommend. And the question is, which of these circuits is going to drive faster? So these capacitors at the end are meant to be the inputs of some load that we're driving and we've got a one drive strength inverter, a one followed by an eight, or a one four followed by 16. And before doing this experiment, before reading this, I always thought this one would be the fastest because it's just one. But what I realized that if we've got a significant capacitance, if this is representative of a big network, say that we're driving, then it's not always the case. So let's have a look at the spice deck and see how this is done. So I have my one inverter here, followed by a capacitor load. Same load for all of these. Two inverters, the one and the eight. And then finally, we've got the one, four, and the 16. And then I'm giving them all the same input drive. And then I'm doing a transient response and plotting the outputs of the series of gates. So let's run that simulation. So the red line is our input pulse, 
and then the blue is the where we've got a single inverter so it's the opposite of the input pulse and you can see how long it takes to charge up and f flip over let me just zoom in on this portion here and then we've got our orange that's next that's two inverters in a row so that should be mirroring the input signal you can see it trying to follow it but it takes a while to come up and then finally we've got three inverters so again the three knots in a row make it inverted of the input signal so this is doing following the same slope as the blue but you can see this is the fastest one where we've got three in a row this is quite an interesting distinction between FPGAs and ASICs with an FPGA we can't choose the types of cells we have we just get the standard flip-flops and the lookup tables and really the router can just try to put things closer together to improve performance but with an ASIC what we can do is we can discover the critical path and that means it's the path that is the one that is slowing down the whole design so if we've said we want to try to meet 100 megahertz timing then we find one path that is taking too long and that means the whole circuit is dependent on that one critical path so we identify that critical path and then all along that path if we increase the drive strength of those cells make them bigger then we can improve the timing just on that one critical path and that can help the timing of the whole design so we can do a practical test now with OpenLane, the open source ASIC tool flow. We can take a simple design and then increase the timing requirements, try to make it faster and faster, and monitor how big the, the overall area is. And Yosis includes a tool called ABC, and that tool can do resizing of cells to try to improve timing. So I made this simple Python script because I'm trying to avoid learning Tickle, and it's very, very simple. I'm just generating a clock period between 0.4 and 1.2 nanoseconds because I've previously worked out that's the interesting range. And then I'm running open lane over and over again, just the synthesis part stopping there because that makes it the test a lot quicker. Then I'm opening the Yosis timing and area report and getting the sum of this area of all the standard cells that have been used to complete this design and then writing the results out to a log. So let's run that and fast forward and collect the results. So I've got the results out of the log file and pasted them in uh, the spreadsheet and then plotted this. And we can see how the area is slowly increasing as Yosis is substituting the smaller standard cells with the standard drive strength for bigger ones that can drive harder to increase the timing speed of the critical path. Here I've got side by side the report of the standard cell usage for the large fast version and the small slow version. And they're both using the same number of cells. The only difference is uh, where the small slow one was using this two input OR gate with a two drive strength was using three of those now it's only using one and it's added two of these um, four output drive strengths and as we now know if we have a bigger standard cell with a stronger drive strength that can charge up the gates of the following standard cells and increase the timing performance of that critical path and so the timing of the whole design can increase so I hope you found that interesting. I was really interested to dig into this and learn a bit more about how this stuff works. If you want to learn more about it, then check out the 0 to 8 website and I hopefully see you on a course soon.